या तो नहीं प्लीज प्रोसीड यस यस अ वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून टू वन एंड ऑल ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ के एल ई कॉलेज ऑफ लॉ नवी मुंबई इट गिव्स मी इमेंस प्लेजर टू वेलकम आर गेस्ट स्पीकर फॉर टूडे मिस्टर स्वप्निल दलवी सर असिस्टेंट टाउन प्लानर पनवेल म्युनिसिपल कॉर्पोरेशन फॉर द गेस्ट लेक्चर ऑन लैंड इट इज इन डीड अ मैटर ऑफ ऑनर टू हैव यू हियर विद अस टूडे सर विल बी एंगेजिंग द सेशन फॉर हैविंग अ डिस्कोर्स ऑन महाराष्ट्र रीजनल एंड टाउन प्लानिंग एक्ट नाइनटीन सिक्सटी सिक्स The Act promotes and regulates developments in the urban areas as well as areas having a potential of being urbanized. It is a comprehensive planning act with developmental functions. It is for the preparation of development plans with a view to ensure that town planning schemes are made in a proper manner and that their execution is very effective. This act majorly delves into the provisions relating to regional plans, control of development, and use of land in development plans. unauthorized development and the provisions for obtaining the commencement certificate today sir will be enlightening us on this very aspect we welcome you sir i would now request our respected principal sir professor dinkar gitte to formally welcome our guest speaker uh, thank you tanaya uh, good afternoon to one and all first of all uh, i would like to welcome mr sophil dalvi assistant town planner anvil municipal corporation anvil on behalf you, of the society scale college of law sir we welcome you and thank you for uh, sparing your valuable time and uh, i mean agreeing to share the knowledge which you have with respect to town planning uh, and uh, land being the state subject it is very important to know uh, the land laws are uh, uh, how the town town planning uh, provisions of maharashtra regional and town planning act does work because uh, it is also very important to know uh, with respect to the growth of uh, real estate uh, industry as well and with respect to uh, what are the provisions which are there so thank you very much sir once again uh, for choosing this contemporary topic and uh, over to you yep thank you, thank you sir uh, just a second sir i would now request professor amrita ma'am to kindly introduce our guest speaker for today thank you so much uh, tanaya ma'am Mr Swapnil Dattatreya Dalvi sir has done his BTech in civil engineering from Government College of Engineering Pune and ME in civil structural engineering from the University of Texas at Arlington since January 2020 sir is posted as the assistant town planner in the Panvel Municipal Corporation under the town planning department of the government of Maharashtra through Maharashtra Public Service Commission thank you so much sir again for accepting our invitation the session is over to you uh thank you tanaya for giving me an opportunity to uh, guide students on mrtp act uh, since last two years uh, i have been working with panvel municipal corporation and even before that uh, when i started uh, studying for this uh, exam mrtp was our bible so uh, anything and everything related to town planning act uh, town planning department starts with mrtp act and uh, i'm grateful that uh, i would be speaking on that uh, but first of all i would like to know uh, uh, which year students are uh, listening to this topic i mean first year second year and is it a five year or three year course so all the students are present here with us uh, you okay. may elaborate and commence as you all uh, like the way you want to proceed so no problem at all okay Uh, yes. now i'll start with uh, uh, the mrtp itself maharashtra regional town planning act uh, uh 1966 uh, has been sanctioned by government uh, in 1966 uh basically the motto of the state government previously was i mean there is a say uh, if you fail to plan then you plan to fail and uh, regarding cities after we got independence uh, we really needed uh, since the population was growing uh, our government wanted to make sure that no haphazard development uh, takes place and uh, to have a plan development uh, they really needed some act uh, according to which uh, a plan development happened. hence in the brought in forward this uh, regional plan uh, since 1996 uh, there have been a lot of and uh, uh, at the way uh, things come up uh, act changes and uh, laws changes so accordingly today the latest update has been uh, uh regarding the covid and uh, 
uh, related activities as per the disaster management act uh, now let let me start with the uh, maharashtra regional town planning act uh, the act has uh, n number of sections uh, first we will have a definition uh, then you will have a regional plans then development plan uh, you have town planning scheme and then uh, other sections i mean uh, levy of uh, development charges and all uh, in this uh, topic in this lecture uh, we will uh, focus specifically on how to obtain uh, the building permissions uh, from uh, planning authority uh, it may be a municipal corporation or it may be a, a regional development authority and, or uh, uh, nagar parishad or any re relative relevant planning authority uh, starting first uh, uh, if uh, i saw the syllabus uh, probably we are speaking about uh, sections 43 to maybe 53 that are the most relevant sections uh, one by one i will try to explain uh, mrtp section 43 i would say now it is more about uh, restrictions on development of land now since we have uh, said that uh, we needed plan development so to plan a development we need a development plan uh, as per uh, mrtp act whenever a uh, state government uh, has to prepare a development plan it will uh, declare its intention to prepare a development plan so while uh, while declaring an intention first it has to demarcate an area that this will be the area under which uh, we are going to prepare a development plan and that uh, area might be of one single planning authority or multiple uh, uh, planning authorities and that will be called as a region under consideration and for that uh, they will start working on uh, uh, the development plan now first step in development plan is you have to do a survey and prepare an existing land use map now why existing land use map is necessary is because uh we the government would like to know or the planning authority would like to know what all uh, uh development has been taken on uh, existing lands where are all the road networks where are all any other features uh, like lakes or mountains or all the features uh, which are related to the land and as per that they would like to make a future planning or try to make a development plan create uh, create a development plan uh, once you get an existing land use map in existing land use map you will have detail of each and uh, every part of the land what all development has taken place if it is an open land if there is any building if there is any structure if there is any way uh, the well or if there is any lake or whatever structure or whatever uh, uh, whatever uh, any development is there uh, we will be uh, coming to know in ex uh, ex existing land use map now with the help of existing land use map we will uh, the government will start preparing proposed land use map uh, which we will call it as plu now <coughs> excuse me now in uh, proposed land use map uh, the government will uh, start zoning first of all uh, if there is any previous zoning in previous sanction development plan then that will come into consideration like uh, there are n number of zones uh, residential zone commercial zone uh, yeah. uh, residential zone commercial zone uh, public semi public zones or uh, uh, i would say industrial zone no development zones agricultural zone and then there are other n number of zones now with the respect to zones once the zones are created they are created with sole intention that uh, the development should take place in this region as per how they are uh, uh, created if <clears throat> if there is a residential zone uh, the government intends to have a development only of residential area suppose any uh, development has been uh, any region has been specified as a residential zone or r zone only residential permissions will be permitted in that or any permissions which are uh, any any permission will be given as per the relevant development control regulation uh, if a residential zone permits uh, n number of activities then only those activities will be permitted so same goes with all other uh, uh, zones uh, residential zone commercial zone i would say uh, uh, industrial zone now usually industrial zones are kept far away from uh, residential zones uh the sole intention here would be uh if any pollution arises it should not affect the residential zone and probably whenever a industrial zone is created 
a buffer zone uh, which in the form of a agricultural zone or no development zone is created around the industrial zone so that no development should be carried around it and the pollution will directly not affect the people living around that industrial zone now uh, we will go to the mrtp act itself uh, mrtp section 43 it speaks on rest, uh, restrictions on development of land uh, whenever a uh, state government declares its intentions to prepare any uh, uh, any uh, prepare a development plan uh, they will restrict any development the people cannot haphazardly start a development they will have to go to the planning authority to obtain an permission and uh, that's when uh, under section 44 and 40, under section 44 they will apply for development permission but but there are some cases wherein you really don't need a uh, development uh, permission uh, to carry out any development works on your land uh, which may be like maintaining uh, your own land uh, any construction like making uh, internal changes which are not uh, which will not uh, create any disturbance in fsi like floor space index or there will be no any uh, there won't be any additional development or uh, additional uh, floors or that kind of things or it government or any uh, planning authority has uh, given you an order to make any development then in case you can go ahead with that and in such a case you will not need any permission from uh, planning authority and there are if there is uh, similarly if there is any government order like state government order or central government order you you can under section 43 you can go ahead and start developing you Uh, they really don't need a uh, permission of the local planning authority uh, to start any development now <clears throat> now once the development plan comes in force uh, uh, any per person or any authority which needs uh, to develop its land it will have to apply for that local planning authority uh, under the relevant sections of uh, development control regulations and under section 44 they will have to uh, submit uh, the proposal uh, now we will uh, speak uh, we will speak elaborately on the section 44 and what all documents uh, usually or paperwork uh, usually is required for uh, getting a building permission now under the section 44 of mrtp act when a person who has to develop his land his land he has to apply uh, through an architect uh architect is the technical or licensed personnel uh, who will be representing the land owner or the developer uh, uh, he will be representing the developer and uh, via via the architect uh, any development permission has to be submitted now architect will uh, uh, submit uh, first of all uh, we will like to know when when the permission comes in the first thing uh, the pl planning authority would like to check is if <clears throat> if there is any uh, reservation proposed on it uh, by the existing development plan in the existing development plan if there is no reservation uh, it is good to go if there is any reservation then probably the the permission won't be allowed and uh, uh, it will be refused uh, as per section 45 now uh, first of all what all documents is needed first you will uh, need to know uh, who is the title holder of that land so uh, in case of title Uh, if it is agricultural land we will need a sadbara uh, if it is a land under a town planning scheme or within the municipal corporations limit uh, probably if there is a town planning scheme then uh, we will need uh, property cards and if uh, the land belongs to, uh, within the sidco area wherein sidco leases lands uh, to the farmers sidco usually Uh, acquires lands from the farmers and gives them lease clause then we will the planning authority will need the lease agreement to issue any building permission this will be the first and foremost document which uh, is the most necessary where we will able to know who is the uh, land owner and who is the proposer or uh, who is the person uh, on whose name we have to give development permission first thing then second thing we would like to know uh the shape and size of the land on which development permission has to be given so in that case uh, we will need a measurement plan from the land record office uh, we call it as tlr office measurement plan or in marathi we call it as mosni nakasha uh, the land record office uh, usually uh, whatever uh, land you have uh, they will demarcate your area on that and from that we would come to know the dimensions 
uh, of your plot and accordingly the same dimensions would be used by an architect uh, to propose uh, the, the development and he will uh, submit the plans as per that measurement plan and that measurement plan usually should have uh, what all boundaries uh, are fixed and who all are uh, which are which plots are adjacent to it and if there uh, if there is any uh, uh, road uh, connecting to it so this is the measurement plan these two documents are the most important documents uh, which we will need uh, for uh, issuing development permission now this uh, two uh, after then this uh the planning authority would need uh, the search report uh, how the land has been transferred to this person's name uh, if it is a sabbara then uh, usually uh, uh, talati or tahsildar office will issue the search report or uh, any lawyer can issue the search report uh, so that search report will be checked and uh, we will uh, see if uh, there is uh, after the land, the person who is the holding uh, who is having the name on his sabbara he is the last person uh on the title search itself if there has been any registration after uh, uh, the sadbara has been done and uh, so sometimes uh, it happens that uh, usually people don't go to talati office and tahsildar office and don't uh, get their names entered on sadbara so uh, probably what happens is uh, i might be the owner of uh, the land and i would have sold the land but uh, the purchaser didn't uh, didn't uh, do Uh, didn't complete the full formality of transferring the land and probably the land might be in my name itself but the purchase has been happened so in that case the planning authority would like to confirm that uh, the person who is applying for development permission he actually holds the land and he has not sold the land to anyone else that is uh, one of the uh, ways uh, we would uh, have a check and uh, this is how it goes now Uh, speaking about panvel municipal corporation panvel municipal corporation has a uh, uh, development plan in uh, panvel old municipal corporation has its own development plan sanctioned in 1993 and then probably in uh, 2009 uh, town planning scheme has also been sanctioned uh, that we call it as town planning scheme variation 1 uh, sirco has its own development plan in sirco area the nodal areas like new uh, new panvel or Uh, kamote uh, and kalamboli areas and there is uh, another uh, 11 villages uh, uh, from uh, uh, akbsna ambarnath kulgaon badlapur area so all this uh, 11 villages from akbsna 18 villages from sidko and uh, uh, panvel council this together are 30 villages and panvel municipal corporation has been formed from this 30 now uh, in our corporation or in general in any planning authority uh, now let's speak about uh, panvel municipal corporation since we have a proposed airport coming up uh, near panvel municipal corporation the airport authority has uh, demarcated uh, an area a radius which is approximately 20 kilometers from uh, the airport and within the 20 kilometers from that area uh, if any development permission has to be taken then uh, we first uh, we will need an airport noc the airport noc will give you Mm, the exact height or maximum height which your building can go so uh, right now uh, if we say uh, the airport uh, authority usually grant permission still uh, buildings which have a height of 55 meter within near the panvel municipal council area and in sidko area and if you go farther they will have more height but uh, right now they are giving only 55 meter height usually these restrictions are done so that when you are in future uh, the airport or runways are designed uh, the airport which uh, the, the airplanes which lands or which takes off they should not have any hindrance and this is one of the restrictions which uh, government can uh, uh, put in and uh, control the type of development uh, in places like uh, panvel or if we go near andheri uh, where in the airport is there mumbai airport Uh, you will see that uh, uh, lab the buildings uh, have really low height so the one and foremost reason for the buildings having low height is the airport or aerodrome area we will say uh, in that influence area uh, within the line of sight of uh, landing and uh, take offs usually uh, they allow lesser height so that uh, uh, the pilots will have a clear vision so this is one of the documents if you have your plot or if you have your land uh, near a uh, airport you will need one of these documents uh, for obtaining a building permission 
then uh, there all you will need a uh, uh, architect's drawing and architect's drawings has to be submitted as per uh, the development control regulations now first thing we will uh, whenever uh, the proposal comes in uh, we get to know the plot area from the sadbara or property card or the lease agreement now uh, as per the udcpr or unified development control and uh, Pro promotion regulation 2020 which has been passed recently i will say exact date would be 2nd december 2020 uh, uh, they have passed a new set of regulations and as per this regulations uh, uh, everywhere in maharashtra except few areas like uh, mumbai municipal corporation and uh, probably there are some areas which have been excluded everywhere we have the same one uh, law where building permissions are given now as per that uh, there will be basic fsi for your plot and if your plot is abutting that means if your plot has access of more than 9 meters then you will get a premium of 0.5 and then ancillary and tdr will be coming up now these are more of technical words but then uh, how we will calculate is uh, the uh, architect will give us how much fsi is being uh, maximum permissible fsi is there and uh, the whatever is his utilization ratio now utilization ratio uh, ratio will be lesser than the maximum permissible ratio and if the proposal in his order first thing uh, we would check is uh, the fsi permissible and as per the first thing second thing will be the side margins now uh, if we uh, now the buildings are uh, classified in two ways uh, one will be a special building and one will be a non special building special buildings are usually high rise buildings uh, high rise buildings means any building which is having a height of 24 meters and more that will be called as special buildings usually for special buildings uh, fire related uh, equipments will be necessary so one of the next document which will be needed is the fire noc from the fire department uh, fire noc uh, fire department would like to check if they have minimum margins side margins for your plot uh, which are Uh, required are probably six meters, and there are n number of fire equipments uh, which has to be set up. So in case of fire, uh, people would be easily uh, it would be easier for the people to escape, and there will be no health hazard, or uh, there will be no deaths in case of fire. And one uh, there will be also one um, area designated as a refuge area. Uh, the fire department usually uh, keeps in certain uh, area. or designated as a refuge area wherein people can come and uh, accommodate there and the fire uh, department can get them uh, back from there and there will be no uh, uh, health hazards or there will be no deaths in that case too. and usually it is an open area within a building and there is uh, no development allowed on that so uh, fire noc will uh, be another thing which will be needed and uh, since uh, if the plot is within planning authority they would like to know if all the uh, taxes has been paid per previously uh, these are uh, all the documents which will be needed and if the proposal is okay then as per section 45 of mrtp uh, the planning authority will issue a commencement certificate now commence uh, if once the uh, owner gets a commencement certificate uh, the, he can go and start uh, constructing the building and uh, there will not be any uh, problem now the commencement certificate under section 45 can be uh, granted unconditionally there are three ways which we can uh, two ways which we can grant the permission uh, either under uh, unconditionally or the planning authority might impose some conditions uh, that one of the conditions might be if uh, you have any missing document or if you are uh, if the plot is uh, 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 if the plot is under reservation if part plot is under reservation or, or if there is any road widening proposed on your plot then probably the uh, planning authority would like you to transfer that uh, area under reservation or area under road widening to pl planning authority before certain development has been uh, completed and usually one step uh, after the commencement certificate where the planning authority gives a check is plint uh, up till the plint completion Uh, uh, the planning authority issues a commencement certificate as per the earlier rule uh, right now uh, uh, there is a plint completion uh, once plint completion is uh, done uh, the architect will have to submit a, a form wherein he will inform the planning authority that the plint completion has been uh, done as per uh, the sanction plan uh, in that case uh, one in 10 cases 
the planning authority will go ahead and check the side margin of the plot. Uh, if the uh, construction which has been done uh, is as per the development plan, and if there is any area under road widening that has been transferred to uh, the planning authority's name, that will be checked and uh, the developer or builder can go ahead and start uh, constructing uh, the building any further uh, above that. Now, after uh, this, uh, uh, it can be done conditionally, unconditionally, and third way, if the plans or if uh, the owner has not submitted uh, documents which are required for obtaining a building permission, then uh, the planning authority, uh, even under the same section 45, can uh, refuse the development permission and uh, probably ask him to comply all the required documents uh, within the uh, earliest time so that they can issue a development permission. Uh, now, uh, section 46 would be provisions of development plan. Now, while granting permission, the planning authority would uh, have to see the initially I spoke that if there is any uh, proposed uh, reservation on the plot or if uh, the whole area is uh, under reservation or if the planning authority needs uh, that plot uh, for any future uh, projects. If in case, if any of this case, uh, uh, the planning authority needs that land or if there is any reservation, the planning authority can straight away uh, decline permission and uh, no permission can be given on such plots. Now, uh, next thing is, uh, uh, appeal. Uh, if the planning authority denies building permission, uh, but if the planning authority denies building permission to the landowner, the uh, landowner can appeal against uh, that order, and that appeal can be done at uh, the level of deputy uh, uh, deputy director of town planning, means the uh, uh, in the uh, yeah, urban development department. So in that case, uh, this appeal has to be done within 45 days. Uh, from uh, the timeline from where the planning authority has uh, declined uh, building permission. In that case, if uh, the uh, deputy director of town planning or any officer designated by the state government, if he thinks uh, that uh, the planning authority which has been declined uh, uh, is wrong, and uh, if any changes can be made, the uh, deputy director or the officer designated, uh, he will... Uh, uh, give in writing an order that, uh, uh, and he will mention the conditions under which the uh, development permission can be uh, given, or he can also mention that whatever order has been given uh, by the planning authority, it is uh, right and uh, development permission cannot be granted. So in this way, um, I would like to say uh, um, the right of natural justice. Uh, uh, in uh, language of law, uh, you uh, always uh, there will be hearing uh, uh, at uh, urban development department, and uh, both the officials uh, from planning authority and the land landowner will be called in, and uh, both uh, people will be heard, and uh, the order would be given. Then we will go for section 48. Now, once planning authority has issued any development permission uh, or the commencement certificate then that permission is valid for one year only. Now, during issuing uh, development permission, uh, planning authority levies n number of charges. Uh, first and foremost uh, will be uh, uh, charge of our uh, uh, development permission in that. Uh, uh, let me check. Yes. Uh, during issuing development uh, development permission, land development charges and construction development charges are uh, levied. Uh, these are done uh, based on the uh, ready reckoner rates. Whenever a building permission is issued, it is issued for one year. And uh, if we can see, all ready reckoner rates are changed uh, on every first April of the year. So uh, the government uh, can keep the uh, ready reckoner rate same 
or probably every year they might make any changes probably 5% 10% whatever the government thinks is right so suppose if we are given a development permission in 2020 uh it might have uh, the annual treatment of in annual treatment of rates the, your land might be costing x and probably the, the land cost can go up so development permissions are issued for one year and if you make no construction on your land then probably your uh, development permission lapses after one year and after lapsing uh, the owner has an option to get the development permissions renewed but uh, this uh, renewal can be done only up to 3 years so if your uh, building permission is uh, granted in 2020 it will be valid till 2024 only if after 2024 uh, no construction has been made on the land the permission will be considered to as lapsed and if any uh, uh, construction or development has to be done on that land probably uh, the land owner or the developer has to again go for a fresh permission uh, why this is necessary is because of the changing uh, uh, land rates uh, the government rates since the development charges are uh, levied based on this land rates and since development charges changes so after 4 uh, years of time the development charges will be more and in case uh, the difference of development charges will be charged so this is more about section 49 uh, 47 of uh, uh, mrtp act now uh, sorry 48 of mrtp act now section 49 uh, if any land uh, is under reservation or the part of land is under reservation or road widening or if there is any highway going through it then probably the highway authority would like to have a buffer area uh, after that road uh, we call it as control line and building line so probably a land might be affected uh, uh, by this thing so in that case if a person comes and asks for building permission the planning authority will decline a building permission to him stating that your land is under reservation or probably it is uh, uh, affected by uh, road widening and the land which is left uh, after the road widening it might be not of use wherein building a permission can be issued suppose if you have to go for a bungalow and considering the shape and dimensions of the remaining land if uh planning or constructing uh, any uh, uh, structure on that land is not possible then in that case the land owner or the purchaser can issue a purchase notice to the state government stating that since uh, my land has been uh, uh, demarcated by any reservation and uh, since i cannot uh, make any development uh, he can uh, issue a purchase notice uh, in a uh, prescribed format and the state government will have to take the cognizance of that uh, state government will ask a report from the planning authority uh, why uh, first of all why the development permission has been uh, declined and they will check the reason if they are of uh, uh, if they are certain that development permission cannot be uh, given because of reservation or anything then the land owner will be com- uh, has to be compensated and again they will go back to the planning authority and they will ask them uh, to pay him the compensation the compensation uh, can be in multiple formats usually uh, uh, people opt for uh, transferable development rights because uh, it is more or less uh, another uh, type of land and it can be traded in open market so in that case uh, transferable development rights can be issued in a form of compensation or even monetary compensation can also be issued uh, uh, to the land owner whose uh, land has been uh uh the uh, faulted by the reservation then section 50 uh after the development plan has been sanctioned uh the development plan will have uh, n number of reservations but the planning authority might think that uh if any certain amount of land or a certain uh, land uh, wherein reservation has been kept uh reservation is not necessary on that land or probably they would have uh, changed uh, the use of that land to someone else then go they can uh, 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 issue a proposal or they can submit a proposal to the state government that uh, this uh, land is not uh, needed for any public use and after verifying and after the state government verifies it from uh, the, the local planning authority the state government can issue orders that this uh, uh a reservation has been deleted and uh, that uh, they will also issue which zone has to be 
considered for that open land once the reservation is declared uh, the, the deleted it might be residential zone or commercial zone or any zone which the state government wish uh, then uh, there is section 51 uh, powers of revocation and modification of permission of development now section 51 is one of the important section here in what happens is uh under section 45 the planning authority might issue development permission to the owner but in case uh, if uh, the planning authority thinks that the building permission which has been issued to uh, the land owner it has to be stopped and that land is very necessary to them uh, for any future aspect then they can uh, issue notice to the uh, land owner and uh, uh, they can revoke the permission in that case but if the the land owner has uh, constructed a considerable uh, uh, amount of structure i mean the, if he has done any considerable uh, construction then he will uh, then he will be entitled to compensation because whatever uh, uh, the construction he has made it is as per uh, the approved sanction plans and as per section 45 and in that case he will have to uh, the local planning authority or the planning authority which have issues building permission uh, it will have to compensate the land owner uh now uh, most importantly uh what happens is a lot of complaints come that if this uh, uh if a construction which is going on it is legal or illegal as per section 45 the planning authority uh, will issue a commencement certificate and uh, uh the land owner has to uh, develop his land as per uh, that plan sanction plan itself but uh, uh, it has uh, been seen that uh, usually a person uh, can start uh, uh, if any person starts uh, uh, any construction on the land uh, without any permission or if he goes against the permission suppose he has been uh, permitted uh, to go for a residential building and if he goes uh, uh, for hospital or if any school and if these things are found out the planning authority uh, can issue a penalty uh, for unauthorized development and in that case uh, the planning authority uh, will issue a notice uh, to the land owner under section uh, 53 of mrtp act uh, wherein they will uh, give a notice that uh, uh, the, the land owner has uh, whether if he has uh, constructed uh, uh, as per uh, you know, the sanction plan or if uh, no permission has been uh, uh, granted on that land and if uh, the construction is illegal then they will ask uh, the owner to Uh, either stop the construction demolish it or uh, uh, do the construction as per the existing uh, uh, sanction plan in case uh, if any uh, now the once the uh, uh, notice of section 53 has been issued then the land owner uh, probably can he has a remedy that either he can stop the work and uh, uh, demolish whatever illegal construction has been done by him or he might again go for amended development permission uh, under section 43 wherein he might uh, ask the planning authority uh, to give uh, uh, development permission to him as per whatever construction he has done and then again the planning authority will check the drawings if they are as per uh, the approved uh, as per the unified development uh, as per the development control regulation uh, they can uh, issue a permission and this all uh, the process has to be done within 30 days if the land owner if he doesn't uh, go for building permission within 30 days then the planning authority has all rights to go on site and demolish the uh, construction if the planning authority does all the demolition work on them uh, on their own then they will charge or they will put what we call it as boja on the land they will put all the boja on the land or whatever uh, uh cost they have incurred uh, while demolition they will uh, add it as a additional penalty on it and the land owner has to pay that penalty so probably this is uh, one of the major sections uh, wherein uh, uh, unauthorized development can be controlled now as per point of view of a law student a uh, lot of uh, people uh, wants to file cases uh, uh, in courts now one major thing uh, which i would like to inform is uh there is uh, one section uh, section 149 of mrt uh if you can go on section 
that will be finality of the orders now as per section uh, 149 of mrtp act this is on me it clearly states that save as otherwise expressly provided in this act every order passed or direction issued by the state government or order passed or notice issued by any regional board planning authority or development authority under is under this act shall be final and shall not be questioned in any suit or legal proceeding uh, whenever in future uh, you will go start practicing on your own as a lawyer lot of people will come to you and they will say that the planning authority has issued me a wrong notice that uh, notice might be of section 53 uh, wherein uh, uh, they have issued a notice of uh, illegal construction in that case they would like to get uh, that notice stayed uh, from the court the first thing uh, which people wants to do is they would like to go to a local court uh, but any order which has been passed by any planning authority it cannot be challenged in any suit uh, if you have to take um, uh, uh, if you have if you have to get uh, that uh, notice cancelled it can be challenged only in high courts if you go and file in court in local courts uh, the local court itself uh, will dismiss the petition and uh, they will uh, not even take the case uh, on the board so probably this is uh, one of the uh, important sections which all practicing lawyers do know and uh, all future uh, lawyers uh, should know that if any ca- person comes uh, to you guys uh, saying that uh, i need a remedy on this that uh, uh, the, the planning authority has issued uh, uh, me a section notice under uh, section 53 or if uh, the if uh, any person wants to uh, stop any construction going on Uh, with which the construction has been sanctioned by the planning authority then in this cases uh, the lawyers have to file a case only in high courts the, this cannot be done in local courts uh, probably this is one of the important places or important section uh, wherein a uh, lot of people don't know but uh, this has to be known by every future practicing lawyers uh, so there is a remedy and uh, whatever courts will Uh, decide probably they will check the legality of uh, uh, the, the notice and if they feel that notice is issued uh, wrongly then they can give a stay on uh, that notice but that stay can be issued only by uh, high courts and it cannot be done in local courts and that is what section 149 is all about and then uh, section i will go back again on section 54 power to stop unauthorized construction uh if uh, as per section 52 uh, if the planning authority thinks that uh, uh, unauthorized construction is uh, going on and uh, it has to be stopped then they can issue a notice and uh, stop the unauthorized construction as per section 54 and uh, same uh, section 55 is uh, similar wherein they can remove or discontinue any unauthorized temporary development permission or uh, development which is going on then uh, as per section 56 uh, these are similar uh, most important i would say is uh, section 45 44 uh, 49 and 47 uh, and then section 52 and 53 mm. probably if we are speaking about mrtp act and related to building permissions these are the major uh, important sections uh, which everyone should know and then section 49 149 is another one Uh, wherein uh, if uh, we have to find any remedy then we have to go there uh, probably these are all the things and then section 57 as i told recovery of expenses if the planning authority has uh, 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 spent any money while removing the structure then they can uh, uh, recover the expenses uh, from the land uh, so uh, wherein the planning authority doesn't have to bear uh, uh, the the cost for uh, removing the illegal construction uh, that's how they compensate it and then uh, these under section 44 usually private people or uh, general people do apply for building permission then there is one section 58 wherein uh, development uh, sometimes is undertaken on the behalf of government now uh, under the definition of government we will say any planning authority or any local authority or if we can say any uh, 
railways or central uh, or public uh, uh, welfare department pwd or irrigation if they have to do any construction then uh, no permission shall be required uh, from the local planning authority and they can uh, start on their own but the only condition is that they have to uh, inform the planning authority now informing planning authority and uh, taking permission from the planning authority are two different things when uh, uh, the development is undertaken on behalf of the government uh, this authority is only informs the planning authority that they are uh, making construction and they don't have to pay any development charges or anything and uh, in such cases the planning authority cannot stop uh, 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 any construction and uh, this is, will be uh, properly valid so only the plan the work of the planning authority here is they would like to see if water development is being uh, taken uh that development is uh, as per uh, uh, sanctioned uh, development control regulation and if they do not violate uh, any other uh, 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 sections that will be the only thing. so probably uh, uh, i went through the syllabus uh, of uh, uh, mrtp for this land loss and mrtp here in i guess we have only uh, starting from section 42 43 to 58 these are the only sections which are more relevant and then second topic uh, which i was told to take was how to obtain actual building permission in that case i told you the, the major uh, uh, documents which would be needed first will be uh, uh, sadbara or uh, property card then uh, measurement plan or mozni nakasha uh, all relevant no uh, uh, no objection certificates which might be airport noc or uh, fire noc and all this uh, uh, documents will be needed and probably uh, architects are usually um, uh, they are good enough and uh, building permissions are uh, uh, issued as per section 45 of the mrtp uh, so uh, basically main uh, the foremost uh, document here in uh, while issuing the building permission is the sadbara or the uh, title of uh, the land uh, that has to be checked and if that is okay then uh, usually no issues come up and probably that would be it for uh, mrtp act yes sir so do you want me to share the udcpr now sorry uh, do you want me to share the udcpr now no uh, we are good with it if anyone wants to refer what all what all is the process of uh, obtaining building permission then we can refer 2.1.2 page number 28 of udcpr and uh, therein uh, they have given all the documents which would be needed for uh, 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 obtaining building permission yeah if you go then go on the screen yeah that one uh, the next after this not this one this is permission uh, yeah uh, next documents necessary for uh, obtaining building permission next uh sir just a minute uh, i'm sorry for the interruption i think there is some network issue sir we are uh, rectifying it from our end okay, okay. yes sir yeah there is one section in uh, udcpr uh, wherein they have given a list of documents which would be needed and uh, how the, the plans has to be submitted uh by the architect probably first of all location plan location of your uh, uh, plot under consideration uh then uh, measurement plan uh, uh these are all the documents and sections and elevations has to be submitted and yes justice yes sir procedure for obtaining the development permission yes two yes. point uh it is easier process probably uh, those people who are uh, used to it uh, they don't find it difficult but uh, probably uh, all those people who are not into the profession uh, they do sometimes find it difficult but uh, if you go to an architect architect is probably the best guy who can help you out and uh it will be easier to obtain that
the main aim of uh, the state government for sanctioning unified development control rules was uh, before this uh, rules uh, came into force uh, every other planning authority had their own development control regulations so panvel used to have separate development control regulations uh, navi mumbai is separate uh, thane kalyan dombili uh, municipal corporation separate but what they did is uh, they brought all this planning authorities under uh, uh, uh one act or uh, one rule wherein uh, every development permission uh, will have uh, same laws for all planning authorities and nothing will be different uh this is the most easiest thing because whenever one officer gets transferred from one place to another he has to again study all uh, the existing uh, development control regulations previously uh, uh panvel used to have different than kalyan dombili different or pune used to have different or nagpur used to have different now what has happened is it has been easier once you study only this one booklet you have to apply it everywhere the same thing and that is the probably the best part for us which the government has done and even for the people because a uh, lot of people or a lot of developers uh, have uh, uh, their developments coming up in all parts and parcel of uh, maharashtra and so every word since the rules are same they don't have to go again and check Uh, how much is the fsi and how much development we can get now everywhere it is one mercy yes this would be it i guess and if there oh, are any questions i can take or uh, if you can let tanaya yes. ma'am know uh, if there are any doubts then she can forward it to me and i can answer it to them so with your permission can we move to the question and answers yes yes Okay, so so we have one question from uh, Mr. Prakash Kadam that mm -hmm. if builder wants to develop la the tribal land, what are the mm -hmm. terms and conditions in that? Okay, uh, uh, in case of tribal land, now your Sadbara uh, Sadbara usually has three types of bhog. There is one word called as bhogotodar varg uh, or class land. Uh, in English, we'll say class class one two three bhogotodar one. एक दोन आणि तीन असे इफ यू कॅन इफ आय कॅन से इन मराठी बोगटदार वर्ग एक दोन तीन बोगटदार वर्ग एक चा अर्थ आहे नो एनक्रमरन्स लँड म्हणजे त्याच्यावर कुठल्याही प्रकारचा बोजा नाहीये किंवा कुठल्याही प्रकारचा शासनाचं काही बंधन नाहीये आणि इट इज क्लिअर टायटल लँड बोगटदार वर्ग दोन ची जमीन म्हणजे ज्या जमिनीवर काही रेस्ट्रिक्शन्स आहेत जसं की ट्रायबल लँडचं तुम्ही बोललात ह्या केसमध्ये कसं इतर अधिकारमध्ये लिहिलेलं असतं की सदर जमीन ही ट्रायबल लँड व्यक्तीची असल्यामुळे त्याच्यावर रेस्ट्रिक्शन्स असतात आता स्टेट गव्हर्नमेंटने या केसेसमध्ये काय केलंय युजली स्टेट म्हणजे एक स्टेट गव्हर्नमेंटची एक जनरल धारणा होती हे जे ट्रायबल कम्युनिटी मधले लोक आहेत तर यांचा उदारनिर्वाह हा फक्त शेतीवर होता किंवा शेती रिलेटेड अलर्ड ऍक्टिव्हिटीजवर होता मला वाटतं हा कायदा ट्रायबल लँड होल्डर्स करिता एकोणीसशे बहात्तरच्या दरम्यान आलेला याच्या अगोदर ट्रायबल लोकांच्या लँड खरेदी विक्री करता येत होत्या पण शासनाने नाईन्टीन सेव्हन्टी टू नंतर ह्या सर्व जमीन खरेदी विक्रीवर बंधन आणली याच एक कारण असं की शासनाच्या असं लक्षात आलं की ह्या ट्रायबल लोकांना जे की शिक्षणाने म्हणजे मी म्हणेल की सुशिक्षित नव्हते त्यांना त्यांच्या जमिनीची व्हॅल्यू कदाचित माहीत नव्हती किंवा त्यांना जर त्यांनी जर सगळी जमीन विकून टाकली तर ते काय म्हणतात दे विल बी लेफ्ट विथ नो लँड आणि मग त्यांचा उदरनिर्वाहाचा प्रश्न पुढे निर्माण होऊ शकतो आणि ज्या लोकांना जमिनीची ऍक्च्युअल किंमत माहिती आहे ते युजली असं करत होते की ह्या लोकांकडून खूप स्वस्त दराने जमिनी घेत होते आणि याला हे थांबवण्याकरिता शासनाने कायदा आणला की ट्रायबल लँडची एकतर खरेदी विक्री होऊ नाही शकत ओनली काहीतरी स्पेसिफिक केसेस आहेत स्पेशल केसेस आहेत की ज्यामध्ये होऊ शकते की ज्या वन ऑफ द रिझन्स इज म्हणजे असे केसेस असू शकतात की ट्रायबल लोक त्यांची जमीन हे ट्रायबल लोकांनाच विकू शकतात आणि डेव्हलपर का नाही डेव्हलप करू शकत तर त्याला शासनानेच बंधन आणले म्हणजे जे कदम यांनी प्रश्न विचारला की डेव्हलपर का नाही विकू शकत शासनाने त्याच्यावर निर्बंध आणलेले आहेत तुम्ही डेव्हलप ट्रायबल माणूस 
हा स्वतः ती डेव्हलप जागा म्हणजे जागा डेव्हलप करू शकतो पण तो दुसऱ्याला डेव्हलपही करू नॉन ट्रायबल माणसाला डेव्हलप करायला देऊ शकत नाही आणि विकू शकत नाही हे स्टेट गव्हर्नमेंटने म्हणजे महसूल रेव्हेन्यू डिपार्टमेंटने हे एक रेस्ट्रिक्शन मानलेले आहेत आणि युजली सात बारा वरती भोगोटदार वर्ग दोन मध्ये हे येत तर दॅट इज द केस हा जेव्हा बिल्डिंग परमिशन देतो आम्ही तेव्हा हे नक्की मेक शुअर करतो की भोगटदार वर्ग एकची जमीन आहे म्हणजे टायटल फ्री लँड आहे आणि इन केस ऑफ प्रॉपर्टी कार्ड आता त्या केसमध्ये प्रॉपर्टी कार्डमध्ये त्याच्यातही सत्ता प्रकार म्हणून एक आहे किंवा क्लासच सेम सात बारामध्ये वन टू थ्री आहे इकडे ए बी सी डी ई एफ असे बरेच प्रकार असतात ए आणि सी मध्ये बिल्डिंग परमिशन दिल्या जातात सेम ऑल दिस हे ए बी सी डी वर्गीकरण करण्याचं काम हे रेव्हेन्यू डिपार्टमेंटचं आहे त्यांच्याकडून आम्हाला सात बारावर प्रॉपर्टी कार्ड मिळाले की आपण युजली परमिशन देत म्हणजे कदम यांच्या प्रश्नाचं उत्तर हे की का देऊ शकत नाही किंवा देऊ शकतो तर बॅकग्राऊंड ते होतं आणि म्हणून रेस्ट्रिक्शन काय डेव्हलपमेंट करून येस सर थँक्यू सो मच then the next question is that uh, we often see city packed with vehicles uh, how mm-hmm. is the new udcpr going to resolve this issue uh there upon uh, in general if we see uh, old previous dcr uh now uh, they have uh, classified uh, uh, parking based on the size of flats which you will have uh, now as per unified development control regulation if any flat is measured uh, whose carpet area is up to 30 square meter and then second uh, classification is 30 to 40 40 80 80 to 150 and 150 and above so what they have did is uh, if you can open uh, udcpr table uh, chapter 8 uh, i guess table 8b uh, if we can go on that ha uh, in general युडीसीपीआर आल्यामुळे आधीच्या जनरल डीसीआर पेक्षा पार्किंगची संख्या दुप्पट केलेली आहे म्हणजे शासनाने याच्यात काय केलंय तीस चौरस स्क्वेअर मीटरची घरं म्हणजे मी म्हणेल आयदर वन रूम किचन ऑर वन बेड वाले तर वन रूम किचन ऑर वन बेड घेणाऱ्या घरांकरिता पार्किंगची रिक्वायरमेंट ही टू व्हीलर म्हणजे असं गृहित धरलंय शासनाने की जो व्यक्ती वन बेड हॉल किचन मध्ये राहील हा हा टेबल आहे इफ वी जो आता हा रेसिडेन्शियल मल्टी फॅमिली मध्ये सगळ्यात लास्टचा आपण पाहू फॉर एव्हरी टू टेनमेंट विथ इच टेनमेंट हॅव्हिंग कार्पेट एरिया लेस देन थर्टी हा तेच द सेम तेच येस तर झिरो कंजेस्टेड आणि आणि नॉन कंजेस्टेड एरिया मध्ये त्यांनी फक्त डिफरन्शिएट केलंय जुन्या डीसीआर मध्ये आणि नवीन डीसीआर मध्ये पार्किंगची संख्या एकदम दुप्पट केलेली आहे शासनाने असं आमच्या निदर्शनात आलेलं आहे आधीचा डीसीआर जर पाहिला असता तर तीस चौरस स्क्वेअर मीटरच्या घरांकरिता आता इथं दर दोन टेनमेंटला चार स्कूटर म्हटलंय म्हणजे साधारण एका टेनमेंटला दोन स्कूटर सांगितलेत पण जुन्या डीसीआर मध्ये पाहिलं असतं तर आपण आपल्याला हे कळालं असतं की एका टेनमेंटला एक स्कूटर किंवा दोन टेनमेंट मिळून एक स्कूटर रिक्वायर्ड आहे असे काही कायदे होते मग त्यामुळे काय होत होतं एखादा सोसायटी आहे एखादा प्लॉट आहे त्यामध्ये ओके सॉरी now let me uh, explain in english now what used to happen uh, in uh, previous dcr is that uh, previous D- in previous dcrs uh, uh, the requirement of parking was very low uh, if we require uh, one uh, car parking or uh, one scooter parking for one right now now since they have doubled it they have also put a restriction uh, what they have restricted is uh, your number of flats uh you can we can grant permissions to number of flats only based on uh, the parking available uh, what has happened is now usually uh, in lot of bigger projects we can see they have started giving podium parking or purely stilled parking uh, previously what is to happen is uh, since uh, uh, the required parking was less uh, in that cases uh, builders used to construct flats on ground floor and first floor and every floor and they used to give parking in uh, the side margins and all but uh, as per new udcpr uh, since they have doubled the parking and uh, if parking is not available then number of flats will be restricted so suppose if you are if he is going for uh, 10 flats which are up to 30 square meter or uh, then in that case he will require minimum uh, four five or 20 car parking uh, sorry scooter parking and in that case he has to add uh, 5% as a visitor car parking so i will say 
one scooter will be added and so he will require minimum 21 scooter parking so if the flat size goes up if he goes within uh, uh, i will uh, describe here is that uh, low income group uh, probably i will say uh, they will go for uh, 30 square meters then mig middle income groups they will go up to 80 square meter now in case if uh, any person uh, who can uh, buy a flat uh, whose carpet area is uh, in a range of uh, 40 square meters to 80 square meters then definitely there is a probability uh, 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 if we see that uh, 40 square meters means uh, we will say that flat will be somewhere around uh, um, uh, 500 square meter carpet area and then uh, there are some uh, other additions and uh, if we consider uh, the rate in uh, any uh, good flat never cost uh, for a uh, two bhk flat it, it will definitely go for more than 80 lakhs or 90 lakhs then all this uh, people who can buy flat uh, they will definitely afford a car it will be really if, uh, easier to buy a car worth 10 lakh uh, as per old dcrs uh, since parking requirement was less so builders uh, didn't used to leave any space for parking and then all these people who were buying buy, buying cars all this uh, car parkings were uh, going on uh, roads and then it was creating traffic issues but as per udcpr since they have doubled the requirement of car parking before issuing any permission all this car parkings will be within the society and uh, the number of car parkings which will be done on the roads it will be reduced and this is how probably that problem can be issued this i mean in the udcpr has uh, definitely uh, uh, taken into consideration uh, this problem and since they have uh, i will say doubled the requirement of car parking uh, this will be really helpful great sir great thank you so much the mm-hmm. next question is uh, panvel mcb many societies have not conveyances or deem conveyances please yes. share your opinion or suggestions on this uh i will just say get a good lawyer go to him and get your conveyance deed done uh, as per government rules and regulations um, uh, it is the responsibility of a land owner once he has constructed a society uh, building and a society has been created uh, he has to uh, uh, comply with the society rules uh, and uh, uh, i will say they have to go to the registrar once the society is registered Uh, uh society people uh, can uh, go to uh, register office and uh, probably it is their job to get the conveyance deed done and it is mm, not difficult in this days uh, if any uh, society approaches a register office it is time consuming but it can be done and conveyance deed one of the society and when uh, redevelopment has to be taken place since uh, the society owns the land no third person will be uh, interfering and society can have uh, their way for uh, doing uh, redevelopment okay so thank you so much and the last question is that is pmc planning to go online considering digitalization in that case how would you verify if the submitted design is stable uh, uh state government uh, since last one year uh, they have uh, they are insisting all the planning authorities to issue building permissions online and they have created a website which is called as the building plan management system or i will say bpms and just because of covid days now bpms they have uh, initially brought back in 2018 but uh, it couldn't go for, further but uh, what i can see uh, as per the latest government resolutions is uh, state government is adamant and they just want to get all the building permissions done online and since now they have restricted all the building permissions to be issued only online to this building plan management system so government is uh, i mean they really want to do it online and in future you will see no offline building permissions will be issued and everything will go online probably in next 3 months or 4 months so you will see that even we in parmel municipal corporation itself we have started uh, the process of uh, uh, taking building permissions online there are few technicalities few uh, uh, problems which we are facing and uh, uh, the maha it uh, they have sent their technical person or state government itself has empowered maha it to send technical persons to all the planning authorities 
so there are technical persons uh, with planning authorities and they will help out all the architects and even us who are to issue building permissions to how to uh, issue building permissions and yes this is coming on way uh, probably uh, state government not only the town planning department it wants every uh, first thing they did was they brought uh, satbara online now initially the uh, satbara if we had to obtain satbara we have to go to talati and only uh, he was able to issue the uh, uh sabara but now since uh, state government has uh, digitized that thing you don't have to go to any planning authority you can just download it same thing uh, is happening with the uh, building permissions also you can uh, sit on uh, a architect can sit in his office or probably he can go on vacation and he can just submit all the uh, uh, drawings online and yes you, you will be able to get building permission all the payments which are being done uh via dd and check now all this payments will be done via rtjs uh, the best thing about this uh, going online with the building permission is the state government can have a real time data uh, how much uh, revenue has been generated uh, by uh, issuing building permission uh, till now uh, they used to um, physically send letters and ask how much uh, 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 revenue has been created but uh, Uh, now the state government can uh, uh, view it online every day. They can get data how many permissions are given uh, throughout the state, and yes, uh, digitization is coming. I mean, it is on our doorstep, and we are happy to do it. Great, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, sorry, sir, but there is one more question. Uh, Professor Amrita would be posting that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is a question by Avinash from First Year LLB. He is asking, can we get BMC land on lease? If yes, what is the procedure for that? BMC land uh, uh, does he mean uh, the land owned by the, uh, the BMC itself or the land owned by private people or how how is he means in what context he is asking? Uh, well, Avinash, if you are there in the uh, meeting, you can please raise your hands. You can yes, yes. pose your question directly to sir. Yeah, or he can probably directly speak with me. That will be easier. Yes, uh, sir. Yeah. I'm just unmuting him. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, sir, I want to know, like the land which BMC is the owner. So, can we mm-hmm. take, take that land on lease? Means, if yes. yes, how can we get that? What is the procedure uh, for that? First of all, uh, now if this is that, first of all, BMC has to uh, issue a notice that they want to give uh, uh, any certain piece of land on lease. Uh, then after that notice is issued, probably they would like to uh, call in for a tender, and they might uh, say that this is the base price which uh, uh, we are looking for uh, as an annual lease or monthly lease, and people can um, uh, quote that. But uh, the background paperwork will be that first of all. Now uh, speaking on technical terms. Uh, Uh, the bmc uh, the general body meeting has to sanction uh, has to sanction a resolution stating that uh, uh, to increase the revenue of a municipal corporation or just take a example of any corporation uh, if they are having a, a good parcel of land either uh, they can uh, lease uh, open lands or probably uh, they can uh, make any constructions just like uh, um i will say uh, commercial shops and all and in their cases uh, they will issue tenders and tender is the only way one uh, to uh, get lands on lease it can be either land or any construction uh, i guess someone has asked me a question i cannot see it now yes sir the question is uh, it's from vinit pawar he says that mm-hmm. if the land is reserved for garden then mm-hmm. if the same land is not developed as garden then to whom yes. we should follow up or town uh, follow up to town planning or the municipal corporation yeah the the municipal corporation has a uh, bankam uh, vibhag or uh, the building uh, the all those people uh, who look after uh, road construction and all 
probably uh, in such cases uh, if the general body and uh, the general body uh, means uh, all these constructions are of course approved by general body uh, uh, means uh, there will be a number of corporators and uh, once the resolution is done that we have to develop this land uh, they will allocate certain uh, amount of money for that uh, work and then same the bankam department of uh, any uh, planning authority they will issue a tender and then garden construction can be done unless and until uh, funds are uh, not provided uh, no construction can be taken but uh, the, then... the place where you have to go is uh, the bankam vibhag of any uh, planning authority okay and then we have one last question sir that can banquet hall be constructed in it parks i would say uh, uh, first of all uh, we would like to know uh, what is the reservation on that land if it is commercial uh, if it is commercial zone and uh, or probably r2 zone residential two zone uh, banquet halls means uh, part floors uh, suppose a building is of 10 floors uh, few floors can be it parks and uh, few floors uh, means i will say commercial spaces commercial offices and then few floors can be uh, banquet halls yes i mean any and every use is permissible if you have uh, uh, full if you are fulfilling certain conditions yes sir thank you so much yes so i guess with that we are done with the question and answers so mm -hmm. thank you so much sir for such an enlightening session you traced yes. the entire graph of seeking permissions under uh -huh. the act for development uh you also enlisted all the necessary documents that are needed for seeking permissions thank you so much for contributing to the practical knowledge of our students with your experience and expertise we are extremely grateful to you sir i would now yep. request professor susmita wadaukar to propose a vote of thanks Professor Susmita, a very good afternoon to our respected guest, principal sir, faculty members, and all the dear students. It is my privilege to propose the vote of thanks today. Given this opportunity, I would like to thank our respected guest, Professor Dalvi sir, for giving us your precious time. We are extremely grateful, sir, for such an informative and wonderful lecture. The students have certainly gained a lot from your lecture. I would also like to thank Dr. Prabhakar Kore, sir, Chairman Kelly Society. for showering his blessings and guidance on our kelly family i would also like to take this opportunity to thank dr mallikarjun ayya sir who has been a constant source of support and encouragement i would also like to thank our principal sir for his endless guidance and motivation in conducting such sessions we would like to continue to conduct such uh, sessions in the future lastly i would like to thank all the participants for the tremendous response thank you so much we would be ending the session now